Hi, this is Eric from Cafe Watercolors. Thank you for joining me in another video and welcome to my new studio. This is a wonderful studio space in my new home that we just move in. We spent about a couple of weeks to move everything in here. And this is now going to be my new office where I'm going to paint, going to make video and edit video and upload to YouTube, anything like that. And I'm really looking forward to utilize this space to create more content and value for you. So one thing that's very exciting for me is the ability to do live stream video on YouTube. So I have much better internet now. So what it means is that I can able to do painting live and I can broadcast it on YouTube and you'll be able to watch it and interact with me, ask me questions. So this is a very exciting thing for me that I'm going to use very, very soon. So I'll start to do some live painting on YouTube, but I'll also do some private sessions for the people who've been signing on my course, they will be able to have more of a close group discussion with me. So that's something that I'm really, really exciting to able to bring it to my students as well. And I also want to show you guys a huge love and a huge thank you for your support. As this video is recording right now, I have 11,365 subscribers on my YouTube channel. It is extremely humbling and overwhelming knowing that the things I put out resonate with so many people. So to celebrate, I'm going to do a painting giveaway. So I'm going to give away this portrait of Daphne Kin that I paint couple months ago, which is also going to be the demo video that I'm going to show you in a little bit. So if you watch Logan, you know who this girl is. She's the girl who plays Laura. So I actually really like this painting myself. I think this is one of the more successful portrait painting that I did. And I also don't feel right to sell it because it's sort of like fan art, even though I'm pretty sure it is under fair use because the original material is a photo. I'm just painting off that, but it still doesn't feel right to sell it. So instead of selling it or just keep it in my drawer, I decided to give it away. So I'm giving it away one of the painting that I actually really like. So this is not a painting that I don't want. I actually really like this. So to enter the giveaway, subscribe to my channel, like this video and comment down below. Let me know what's the most important thing that you learned from all of my videos so far. So I'll pick out one winner sometime next month and let you guys know. And without further ado, here is the video of me painting this portrait of Daphne Kin. Enjoy. Okay, so whenever I'm doing a portrait, I spend a lot of time on drawing. Mostly because I'm not a natural, it is difficult for me to get a good solid drawing down without spending some time to observe, measure, and make lots of marks on paper. But even so, I keep my initial lines very, very light so I can erase when I made a mistake. There are definitely times that I draw for 10 minutes and end up erase almost everything and start over because the proportion or something is just not right, the size of the head is too small, etc. So because this is a quarter view and her head is slightly raised, it is very important for me to really get into the perspective and the structure of the head. So in this drawing stage, you will feel like I'm drawing sort of a robotic looking head with a lot of playing and structures. But this is to help me to analyze her face. Knowing how to read the structure of the face can really help you to paint the right lighting and make your portrait very dimensional. All the planes of the face, all the structure of the face need to face a certain direction. So you can see roughly like the bottom of the nose, which we usually don't see that much. You see a little bit more because her head is tilted up. You see a little bit more of her upper lip and her eyebrow, the brow bone is facing up a little bit more because her head is raising up. She's looking up. And these are very important things to know because if you don't know the structure of the face, the painting can turn out really flat.
So now after all the light marks that I make, I'm a little bit more sure where the things are going. So I starting to make some darker marks for the anchor points. And I lightly erase some of the construction lines away. So only the darker marks remain. So the drawing looks a lot cleaner now. And human faces are weird like that. A few millimeter off can really change the person, which is why I spend extra time to make sure I get the position and the proportion right. Otherwise, if I starting to paint, it'll be really hard for me to start adjusting stuff. Especially for watercolor, because once you paint it down, it's really difficult to fix anything, and you cannot just paint over with a lighter layer. And you can see that I adjust the position of the mouse a little bit. I move it up just a slight bit. And with that little change, you can see the face looks much better. So here goes the first wash. The first wash is to get that white of the paper out of the way. It is important to remember that you shouldn't try to do too much in the first wash. The more you're trying to do, the higher chance for you to ruin it. So get a big brush, have a good amount of water in your mixture, and just quickly paint the warm and the cool tone of the face. But the most important thing is to have a nice clean wash. You need to do it in one go and just leave it alone. If you try to keep going back to it while it is starting to dry, you'll ruin it for sure with some awful looking cauliflower edges. Even if you're not completely satisfied with your first wash, still, when you're done, leave it, let it dry. It'll dry much lighter than you think. I definitely don't always have a satisfying first wash but I learned to just leave it alone, leave with the imperfection. And when you go back to it after it's dry, starting to define the features, all the little things that you're not really happy about the first wash, they go away. So I waited for the first wash to be completely dry, take a smaller brush and I start to, what I like to call modeling the eye. A lot of time I do the drawing and just the first wash, then then I go to sleep and I come back to it the next day, especially when you're doing a studio painting, you can absolutely take your time to do that. And it depends on the weather, the humidity and the paper and the paint that you use, the drying time can vary. So there are different ways to approach a portrait painting. When I was painting oil, I start by just blocking the light and dark shapes and leave the modeling part of the feature to the last because I can simply paint over them in oil so I can start much looser. But for watercolor, I like to start from modeling the eye, the eye socket and out. I like to approach my watercolor portrait this way because I set the benchmark for the dark value and the amount of detail. So this become a very good referencing point for the rest of the portrait. So keep in mind to play with warm and cool value. You can see the red is quite intense when I first put it down, but as it dries, it won't be as strong. And what I like to do with portrait is to drop a good amount of paint and come back with a clean, damp brush to soften some of the edges. Remember to paint around and leave some highlights. So here specifically, the lower eyelid is catching some light so I keep that area light. So now I'm rapidly finishing her right eyes with same process, but now I bring the value out and down to her chin and part of her neck. So you can see that I try to do as few brush strokes as I can, and I don't keep lift my brush off my paper. If you keep lifting the brush off your paper and do small strokes, your painting will get muddy very quickly because instead of painting a clean shape, 
you are making a bunch of small marks everywhere and that will make your painting looking messy because you keep moving the paint around so you're not allowing your paint to get settled on the paper. So make every brush stroke count and don't be so quick to lift your brush off your paper. Make sure the destination of your brush stroke and guide your brush there and lift it up when you are done with it. So a couple clean strokes and soften some of the hard edge so the form turns. Giving some darker value under her chin and over down to her neck. This is one big shape. Connecting shape is very important in watercolor. Her hair is casting a big shadow on her neck so I try to quickly indicate the shadow shape of her hair and this is all in one wash. Adding more shadow and soften the hard edge on her chin. And I feel it's overall a little bit too warm so I added some cooler color on her neck just to cool things off a little bit. Now onto her lips. So I paint a nice strong shape of her lip and I make sure everything is in one wash. And there's a nice dark shadow under her lips. So I make sure I paint that in. But it's a soft shadow shape so I make sure I soften it a little bit. So give it a little bit more cast shadow on the side. Make sure they are following the form of the face. Giving a little bit more detail. And now I start to paint the nostril of her nose. Give it some darker value but not too dark. Now define the corner of the lip by giving a little bit darker value and soften it out. So you feel like the form is turning inward in the corner of her mouth. So portrait is pretty much painting the right value in the right proportion and has a good variety of hard and soft edge in the right place and you end up with a nice looking portrait. But a really important thing is to understand the structure of the face and the proportion of the face and the ability to control your edges. Now I go back in and start to darken some of the area that's not dark enough. It's really easy to overdo it so I tend not to do too much of that. But with that little bit more dark value here and there, it gives a lot more definitions. Paint a little dot of the mole on her face. And at this point, I'm just looking for places to define a little bit further, adding a tiny bit of value here and there. But it's important to step back once in a while and look at your whole portrait. Is it enough? Does it need more definition or is it going to be too much? Adding some value at the wing of her nose and the whole nose just feel a little bit more defined. Now onto her hair. So for the hair, I like to go a little bit crazy. So I drop in some cobalt blue just to loosen me up on the color. So what I always say is as long as the value and the shape is good on the hair, you can have a little bit more fun with the color. You can have a little bit more blue and red, some saturated color. As long as the value is right, it's not going to look off. 
So the hair is basically one big dark shape with some delicate details on the edge. So a couple of hair strain coming out, a little bit of highlight, and your mind will read it as hair. I don't need to do every single little detail and every single hair strain. So I decided to darken the value of the shadow on her neck. Before the hair is dry, I just bring that value over. So it sort of melts into each other. And I think that's the fun part of watercolor. And sometimes when you connect the shape, the painting looks a lot more interesting. And when you connect the shape and the shape sort of melts together like this, and that becomes actually the very exciting things for the viewers to see. Because if you define every little thing, you basically do all the work for them. And when they're looking at, but when you're just suggesting a little bit of details and, and leaving some areas for imagination, it actually makes it more interesting to look at. Now onto the other side of her hair. Because this is behind her right face, so if you paint over a little bit too much, you start to cut into her face. But at the same time, this is also a good opportunity to fix the shape of her head if you need to. And I keep that shape pretty dark so the face just pops out. And it's always exciting because as soon as you put down the dark value of the hair, the whole face just start to come alive. The contrast is there, the form pops, the whole head just feel a lot more complete. And add some subtle values on her chest area as well. Giving some quick form of her right arm. And bring that value out to paint some background. And this part is pretty much just get a little bit of definition of her clothes and the background. The majority of the painting is done. So rest of the painting are just some indications. They are just the background and secondary elements. So you don't have to pay a lot of attention to that. You don't have to paint a lot of detail on that. They are helped to bring the contrast of the face. The hair is dry, so I can add a little bit more darker value here and there. Indicate some cast shadow on the clothes, onto her skin. And we're finished. Thank you so much for watching. And again, I'm giving this painting away. So subscribe, like, and comment down below. Let me know the most important thing you have learned from any of my video. Visit my website at cafewatercolor.com. Sign up for a fast track watercolor PDF guide. Also check out my online course, my paintings, and other stuff. Thank you, and I will see you next time.